type of position statement advocating for certain things for the panel to look at. But a critical thing on the review panel to keep in mind is the entire award gets reviewed by that second review panel. The town council, if it decided to reject the arbitration award, cannot cherry pick which issues they want that second panel to look at. So there's always the possibility that the second panel could say something that the panel ruled on that's in the town's favor, the second panel could reverse even though the town didn't intend that by rejecting the award. They could also overturn and reverse something that was awarded to the teachers, just as I said. You can't change positions from where you were at the first hearing. The final last best offers that went before the panel are the offers that the second panel looks at. The second panel are three neutral arbitrators, however. So three, three arbitrators who have been appointed through the governor's office to serve as panel chairs do the review in this second panel. So there aren't party arbitrators involved. Bless you. They hold no hearings. They look at the entire record that was submitted to them at the first hearing. And they look at it issue by issue, anew, and decide whether the particular statutory factors that the arbitration panel has to consider have been applied correctly. And they, as I said, they can reverse or uphold any of the issues throughout the entire award. Critical thing to keep in mind is that if there is a rejection of that arbitration award, the legislative panel, uh, excuse me, the legislative body of the town, the town council, has to pay the entire fees related to that appeal. All three arbitrators' fees that for the time that they spend reviewing the award, reviewing all of the evidence, the transcripts, the testimony, there's also fees involved to produce the transcripts in written form. All of those costs are borne by the legislative body if they decide to reject. Is there an ability to further appeal that second panel's decision? And there is. Either party can actually appeal to court, superior court, either following the initial decision of the first panel or following the decision of the second panel. The standard in court is very high. I've outlined it in the materials. I won't bore you with the legalese as to how that actually does get overturned, but it's very, very difficult to do that. The system is designed that way that arbitration should generally be the last step. One of the things to also keep in mind is that the TNA, the Teacher Negotiation Act, does explicitly say that whichever party takes the appeal to court, if they don't prevail, they are responsible not only for all of their own costs, but all of the other parties' costs in court as well, which is highly unusual. But the statute itself says that explicitly. Let me just close by telling you what the things are that the arbitration panel will look at if we go to arbitration, what the statute says they have to consider. There are two primary factors that the statute outlines. The first, the statute says, is the public interest which neither the legislature and then in turn, obviously, then the statute does not define. So it gives the parties the opportunity to argue to the panel what they each consider to be the public interest related to the issues in dispute. And the other priority consideration is what's called the financial capability of the district and the town. And the financial capability prong is related to the other five factors that the panel also looks at. Because what the statute says is the panel needs to look at the five secondary factors in light of the financial capability of the town. And what are those other five factors? 